Hi guys, it's Taff. Welcome back to Micropose's B17, the Mighty Eighth game. Uh, I thought we'd start a let's play on this one uh, with a historical campaign. So let's just um, sign up. So the first bombardment division. So let's just select the 401st group. Uh, and these are the ah okay. So these are the four squadrons within the uh, the 401. Um, so let's go for the 612th. Uh, and we'll start in December 1943. Okay, let's uh, pick a uh, a bomber. Any bomber will do. Let's woman in cap. Yeah, let's pick woman in cap. Let's change the the bomber name. You can do that. Let's do that to a uh, angel fire. Okay, so this is the crew of the Angel Fire. We've got Bombardier Paul Whiteley. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we can change his name if we wish, but there's no point. So Navigator Rob uh, Troborg. Uh, pilot Jack Shave. Tom Busby is our co-pilot. Top turret is Sean... Um, Uh, okay, so these are. I was going to say, I wonder if the names changed, but these are pretty much the default names for all the crew. So that's fine. Uh, let's continue. Right, so here we are in the uh, in the mess, as it were. We've got the squadron commander's uh, office there, which is not available to us in uh, campaign mode, and also the operations room. So there is a there is a, a squadron commander game. Uh, mode where you basically plot the missions, set, uh, select which bombs go out on the missions, etc. So we've got uh, the bomber commander's office here. Now you can go outside to inspect the bombers. Um, we've got our out tray, we've got the, our bomber information file, which basically t says Angel Fire hasn't done anything yet, it's in active state. And we can have a look through the, the crew. So similar to the its predecessor in B17, where you'd go through the crew in the uh, the crew photo. On this one, we've actually got a file. So we've got the bombardier here. Um, he's above average in bomb aiming, and he's pretty average at everything else. Again, let's just check for uh, first aid. He's average first aid. It's always good to know who your best first aid are. So um, our navigator. He's got poor gunnery. He's got average navigation, which might be a problem. But he's a good first aider. So at the moment, our navigator is our primary. Uh, first aider uh, pilot uh, above average piloting and he's an average he's above average technical uh, and he's average first aid so he could be useful um, similar for the co-pilot so top turret he's below average at first aid uh, he's above average at technical which you'd expect as he's also the engineer uh, and he's an average gunner radio operator he's He's average gunnery, average first aid, average technical. So he's an all-round reasonable starting point, to be honest. Um, bull turret, average gunner, average first aid, poor technical. Okay, left waist. Okay, not much to say. Oh god, and tail gunner. Okay, so navigator is our best um, first aider, which is good to know. Uh, medical file, obviously our crew are fit and healthy because we've just come off from training so let's go into the briefing room and see our first mission okay, Breast Harbor a secondary target is a UBO base Okay, distance 797 miles there we've got a fighter cover of a squadron of P-47s and a P-38s okay the harbor Flak strength moderate, fighter strength minimum, priority medium, damage none. Uh, Breast harbor is used to transport some materials and personnel important to the German war effort in the local area. Striking the port would disrupt communications and supply, as and supply as well as affecting local morale support for the Germans. Okay, okay, German pair, you pair, no tertiary target. Okay, let's sign up. We're happy with that. We get a quick reconnaissance film.
And as you can see, there's the harbour there. Um, I think we'll probably aim to take out the the main buildings on the harbour side, rather than any ships in the in the actual port. Um, we got a quick map view, which we can have a look at. Uh, so we're taking off from England, and obviously coming down to the. Uh, uh, it should be quite reasonable because these blue bands are fighter cover, as in the, the Luftwaffe fighter cover, uh, and these little red bands are flak areas. So, you know, the thicker they are, the heavier it is. Um, so, we're, we're avoiding fighters and we've only got a bit of flak, so this should be a bit of a milk run on our first flight out, which should be nice. Um, so, let's start the mission. Ordinarily, on other um, missions uh, we won't go through all the uh, the flight map unless there's something particularly interesting and we'll just kick on with the missions but uh, here we are here's Angel Fire uh, I'll just press Control and B start to uh, start the mission Master switch on are cleared for takeoff. Hi guys, welcome back. We are just leaving the English shores behind us, as you can see, uh, and we're just going over the uh, the English Channel now, uh, over to France, which I can't see at the moment, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of cloud cover. So, good news is uh, we're on target, so there doesn't look like there's going to be too much fighter opposition. Uh, we have been joined, as you can see on the icons on the side, by some uh, lightnings and some Thunderbolts, a uh, squadron of each as friendlies, so um, I don't know if we can see them panning around the sky. Nope, but they're there somewhere, so it's all good. So I'll um, I'll pause the recording again uh, and until we hit the French coast. Hi guys, uh, we, as you can see we're just coming up to the French coast now, um, no dramas so far. Uh, we're, we're all merrily flying in formation. Uh, everything's going well. The there. there we go. Navigate has just confirmed that is the French coast down there, so we are on target. Um, as you can see, we are just coming into over this um, head of land here, uh, and then we're going to make a quite a quite a flight inland to sort of basically come around this uh, anti-aircraft fire here. And attack it from the um, the southeast. Um, so yeah, it should be an interesting run. Uh, we can try and line up over the uh, over the uh, the river inlets and stuff. So um, okay, as I said, this as thought, this is quite a a bit of a milk run. There's uh, very little going on so far. So um, yeah, I'll keep um, I'll pause the video until something happens. So uh, see you in a bit. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, we've just made our final turn. We're just um, setting up now for the bomb run. As you can see, we're just um, uh, bomb doors are open. We're just um, finalising our, uh, our our heading. And uh, yes, so here we have the uh, the river inlets, or the the, the uh, mouths of the rivers of the sea, and the harbour should sit roughly about there. I think it's just over that spit of land. If we just go to the map. Yeah, it's just over that spit of land. Or that sticky out bit of land. Uh, and that's our 
Okay, the, the U-boat target is really close to the... Uh, So yeah, it's about there. So we're on target. Let's um, come out of the navigator, switch to the bombardier, and uh, let's have a look at his view. Okay, so you got the, the town of Brest behind. Got a slight layer of cloud in the way at the moment, but um, It's not too bad today. There's, there's the odd bits of cloud here and there, but uh, it, on the whole, it's quite a clear day, so we shouldn't have too much problem seeing the target. So for this let's play, I thought I'd um, rather than concentrating on just one position, uh, I'm you know naming a, one of the the crew members after myself and just sticking to that one position because obviously we could get injured and then the missions would still continue without that crew member. So. Um, I'll leave the pilots as are, unless I need to jump in for some emergency yeah, flight. Um, let's see how the bombardier gets on, because um, I may just you know take over the bombardier during critical action. Um, and there's a couple of uh, navigation changes I've made with the navigator on the way here, because he's got lost a couple of times. But it is, it's making these corrections, and um, so when the navigator gets lost, you correct him to his, um, his actual position or, or nearest damage as you can identify, and it will affect his skill level over time. So if you keep correcting um, accurately, then his skill will increase uh, quicker, and uh, his navigation will improve from average, what it is at the moment, to you know, above average, and then up to excellent and superb. So same for the bombardier um, and then you can leave them a little bit uh, yeah you can leave them once their, their skill level um, gets higher because you, you can trust them to do the job properly so uh, as you can see we we can and here we've uh, we started to get some anti-aircraft fire uh, let's just switch to the out view how thick is it Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, that was nothing really. Okay, so as you can see, you can see the harbour in front of us. I am going to select M to take manual control. Uh, and so I've got the, the plane now. I'm flying the plane, just changing. And what we need to do, we need to target the buildings on the uh, the key side uh, hang on, I'm struggling to get where I want to go about there uh, yeah and I'll just lock this into the uh, into the Norden bomb site computer, as it were. As you say, I'm mean, drifting a little bit actually. I think we're drifting left a little bit. And what all you got to do is concentrate on what we're doing. Ignore the the anti-aircraft fire yeah, we are drifting right aren't we, uh, drifting left even so let's target there I want to get just on the edge of that um, the, key, the, uh, the jetty oh, I'm struggling Want to get about there? Okay. Now the idea is, as we come over the target, if we've got our calculations correctly, the crosshair won't drift or or move. It should just 
almost, you know, it appear like it's locked on. And uh, as we get closer, ooh, somebody just got clipped. Um, I'm thinking, do I want to move? It's a bit late now. Um, we are drifting. Hang on. Ah, late last minute corrections are not good. Okay. Whoa. Okay, the flax is getting a little bit heavier now. Okay, as you can see, the uh, the bar on the on the right hand side is slowly going up, and once those two bars are aligned, the bomb release will automatically drop the bombs because uh, that's when the bomb site calculates is the correct uh, the correct time. So ready, bombs gone. Bye bye bombs. Right, fingers crossed. Here we go. Here's the target. Now we were aiming for this mark here, um, and I think we're not going to be. It wasn't the best. It was a bit last minute, wasn't it? So um, yeah, you got to watch out because we've got civilians here. Ah. Okay, so um, a lot of bombs into the drink, but oh, we got we got yeah, that's not bad actually. I don't think we got a few um, civilian houses here, but oh, we got a ship as well. Look, uh, if I can control the mouse, yeah, that ship's on fire. So that's not bad. Okay, it is our engineer. What's he doing? Looks like he's going to close the doors manually. Yes, he is. Okay, so we obviously took a bit of flack to the uh, the mechanism that closes the uh, the bomb doors. So he's just manually cranking them closed. There you go. Doing a grand job. Yeah, you can see we've taken flack to the engines, it's a bit worrying, especially, whoa, okay, we hit, we took a lot of damage from that, and our, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was our engineer who took some, uh, took some hits there and screaming out, so let's just, oh, it looks okay, normally they've got like a little ghost if they've been uh, shocked or, or they're in, you know, a bit of trauma, but he looks okay, um, but yeah, we are. We've taken a bit of uh, flak damage now, as you can see. Um, I am worried about all that flak damage there around the uh, the nacelle with the wheel and in it. That may cause us um, problems when we come to land. But as you can see, Breast Harbour burning in the background, so I think that was quite not bad for our first run. Um, just check on the map. Okay, we've got a little bit further to go before out of range of the anti-aircraft. Let's just have a look at the, uh, the squadron. Um, We have, it's not the biggest squadron today, but um, everyone appears to be okay. I can't see any smoking or switched off engines. Um, we look the worst damaged actually of all the uh, of all the aircraft. Obviously, we're, as the lead, we seem to have taken a lot of the damage. Okay, there you see our friendlies. Uh, the lightning's just going over there, and we've got the. Uh, Thunderbolts over there, and we're just leaving France behind us now. So, uh, looking for the English shores and uh, a safe return home. 
Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we're just coming over the English coast and we've just had a couple of um, casualties. So the navigator's gone down and the radio, to the radio operator uh, has gone down as well. These obviously flak bursts, as you can see. He must have taken some damage from a flak burst earlier and he's just been losing a bit of blood. Uh, unfortunately, na our navigator, who is our best, uh, our best first aider, was down. So, okay, so... Um, Who's that? Paul Whiteley, he's on Bombardier. Rob is our navigator. Okay, so navigator's back up. Good. And oh, our um, radio turret's back up as well. So uh, if you have a look, you can see, yeah, uh, look, Flat came through his position through the window, so he probably took some. Um, we may lose those guys for the next mission. Oh look, and our rear turret, uh, sorry, our rear gunner, his position is taking a lot of damage as well from flak. Uh, everywhere else looks okay. As you see, this is this is England below us. Um, Hi guys, welcome back. We are just making our final approach um, for landing back at our base. Um, I'm going to let the computer control pilots uh, land this one. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye out for that, for this wheel. Make sure the landing gear comes down okay, because uh, as you can see, it's starting to deploy flaps. Um, and fingers crossed, the uh, the landing gear will be okay, because I'm a little bit concerned that that may be damaged. So as soon as that starts to come down, no, it's all deploying nicely. Okay, excellent. Panic over. Uh, fingers, fingers crossed. Our guys can uh, touch us down safely. It's a nice approach, actually. Speed, he's got us doing 108, 109, 110. Okay, he's just. Gain a little bit of speed as we come down. That's nice. Hopefully, do a nice soft three point landing. Drifted a little bit. No, that's fine. Absolutely fine. And beautiful landing. Whoops, a little bit of a wiggle at the end, but nicely controlled with the rudder. Yeah, well done, guys. Good land, taxi to heart. Was a good landing, yep. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, quite a bit of flak damage. Just uh, need a bit of patching up before our next run. But uh, yeah, we came through it okay. Okay, uh, let's go to the debriefing. Hi guys, welcome back to Mission Debrief. Uh, let's have a read. So, debriefing summary, mission date. 1st of December 1943. Uh, Brest Harbour was attacked, distance flown 868 miles, which is further than was allotted in the actual briefing. I think it was 700 and something, wasn't it? So you can see our navigator's mistakes have caused, you know, extra mileage to be done. Um, bombs lost or missing, zero, which is great news. Uh, no fighter coverage was uh, was um, was met, so no worries there. Bomb damage estimate was moderate, so it's not bad. Um, so Lieutenant Droborg, a medium wound. Kavanagh, uh, I think he's our Sergeant Kavanagh, he's the uh, the radio operator, he's got a severe wound, so he, he did take quite a pummeling, and Whitley has got light wound as well, so they'll all get the, um... okay, so that wasn't too bad, obviously we've got the, uh... some of them were lost in the sea, and uh... but that's not too bad, We've got so at least we've got some hits, so they've all got purple hearts, 
Okay, so overall, everyone survived, and it's not a bad mission. So, thanks for joining me. Uh, that has been mission one on the first tour for our bomber crew from Angel Fire. Um, join us next time to see where mission two takes us. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.